Hi guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Dark Tide Fly Fishing. My name is Jack Lotta and today we're going to show you a quick video hack on how to modify your commercially bought fly rattles. Regrettably, a lot of the commercially available rattles, whether glass or plastic, are not terribly durable. A lot of the rattles that I've used historically seem to take on water, in addition to the fact that they are not very loud. This video will show you how to make them more durable, more waterproof, they'll help with the neutral buoyancy of the fly, and of course, they'll be a lot more audible for those fish species that you're targeting. Tools you'll need to modify your own rattles are as follows. Hairline dubbing, plastic or glass rattle, preferably plastic as it's more durable. Shrink tubing or heat shrink. One or two millimeter foam. Flexo tubing. UV knot sense or similar UV glue. A lighter. UV torch, Loctite super glue or similar, sharp scissors, sharp side cutters, and finally, forceps. Okay, step one, take our side cutters and we're gonna remove this lashing point because it adds redundant weight and we're not going to be using that. Throw this piece away, which is no longer needed. And we are left with this. The next step after trimming the rattle with the side cutters is we're gonna place the rattle inside the shrink tubing and we're going to heat it up accordingly with a lighter. We we'll take the rattle. Here I've cut the appropriate length of shrink tube or heat shrink, okay? and I'm going to place the rattle in such a way that I'm gonna have a little bit of a tag end on the one side and a nice long tag end on the other. This side here, I'm going to pinch close with the forceps once I've heated it up. I'm going to do the same with the side, but the longer side is going to be the lashing in point which will attach to the hook shank. Take a lighter and lightly apply the flame to the one side of the rattle and the shrink trap. So it heats up around the rattle as such. And I will then take my forceps and pinch that one side entirely closed, like that. Now I'm gonna do the other side, exactly the same way. Lightly apply that flame evenly around the rattle so that it shrinks nicely and uniformly around that rattle, thereby effectively waterproofing it and insulating it at the same time and increasing its durability. Careful not to burn yourself. And then going to seal the other end of the rattle. That's good. With the forceps. At this point, I'll just trim one of the sides I'll trim as much excess as I can without cutting into and effectively reducing that seal, that watertight seal. Trimming it here as much as possible without removing that, that watertight seal. I've left this side here deliberately long. So if you want, you can use this as a lashing or tie-in point for the hook shank. You would attach this side here. Um, Alternatively, you can trim this and you can put this in flexo tubing, which I'll demonstrate shortly. I'm now adding foam, which is cut approximately half the length of the rattle, and I'm going to apply it to one side of the rattle only. What this will do is it'll increase the audibility of the rattle, in addition to adding some much needed neutral buoyancy to the fly, so that the weight of this particular rattle doesn't offset or kill the fly unnaturally in the water. I'm going to take my Loctite and I'm going to apply it to one half of the rattle entirely all the way around that shrink-wrapped K 
casing. At this stage, I'm going to take my foam on that one half of the rattle, stick it down, and slowly rotate the rattle around, adhering the foam to the super glue, nice and tight. And I'm going to compress that down as such. At this point, I'm going to trim my excess like that. And once more, I'm going to take super glue, apply it all over that one side, that point over there, and lastly, around the base of the rattle there to ensure that that foam is nice and rigid. As I mentioned, this is one way to make the rattles. You can then, at this particular point, attach this rattle onto the hook shank by lashing down this excess shrink tubing onto the hook shank. However, I'm going to show you the way that I prefer to do it. I'm going to trim this side in exactly the same fashion as I did that side doing my very best to ensure that I do not work my way into that watertight seal. I'm left with this. I'll take a section of flexo tubing. I will place the rattle in that flexo tubing. As such. And the reason why I like the flexo tubing is I can obviously extend this quite far out and position that rattle further away from the hook shank when I lash it down. I'm gonna select more or less the length that I want, trim that with my side cutters. We'll apply some UV knot sense or some UV glue of your choice or preference all the way around this area here. and I'm going to work it in so that when I set this, it binds into the meshing. I now take my side cutters, work my way in here, and trim off the tag ends of the excess that I'll no longer need. This effectively is what we are left with a nice longer piece of material with which to lash down our rattle to the hook shank more or less where we want it it's strong that rattle's not going anywhere and we've increased the durability of that quite substantially in addition to the fact that we've increased its audibility So, in quick summation, we have our plastic rattle, okay? We've obviously cut off that side over there. From there, we've taken it, we've placed it in the shrink wrap, we've heat up both sides, we've applied the foam over there, okay? I've left this side long. This is a finished rattle that you can, you can otherwise use. Alternatively, you can trim off that side and place it in flexo tubing like I do and I have demonstrated uh, to increase the distance of uh, the rattle from the hook shank and lash that in accordingly. This particular video was brought to you in conjunction with Mub and Gunner Fly Fishing. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and post any questions you have in the comment section.